So that's the title, and uh, let's proceed with this. Uh, and uh, I do not really need to overemphasize uh, that uh, we are in the most troubled time in the history. Uh, after the Spanish flu in 1918, uh, uh, we have come across uh, with an unprecedented level of uh, uh, business closures, uh, a complete paralysis, uh, uh, which uh, for an unforeseeable feature, even if you manage to survive, uh, I do not see is happening anytime soon. Uh, what particularly is happening in this case is, uh, if you look at the different stages, the way this pandemic has unfolded, starting from uh, January uh, this year, uh, uh, there are losses of uh, the business are shutting down. Uh, there are massive retrenchment, but these are all happening at different levels uh, and also at different stages. So one way up to look at it is the way we now link that to the uh, way pandemic is unfolding. You have uh, uh, you, at the first we have a one-to-one -one transmission. Then we come to a stage of a community transmission. The other one happened is uh, you have the first outbreak, second outbreak, and some countries are going into the third outbreak. Uh, so how this is linked to the loss of businesses and, and the retrenchment. So if you look at the first stage where there are uh, massive layoffs and the business are down, and as we enter into the uh, pandemic, but uh, this, the nature of this actually changed. Uh, this, this is the first stage where not that the business were actually uh, bankrupt or they didn't have the capital to sustain. It is because out of the panic, uh, so that, that happened. But if you look at the second stage, uh, here I'm talking not uh, to very specific to a particular geography, but I'm talking in general, uh, how it has affected the world at large. And if you look at the second stage, where uh, the closure is more and uh, less associated with the way they anticipated that this uh, COVID-19 related disruptions will take place. Uh, so this is an anticipation, okay? Uh, uh, and businesses said that, no, this is probably untenable uh, in a COVID era or probably a post-COVID era. Uh, uh, so that, that was how they responded to the crisis. The third stage uh, is that uh, the large scale of the bankruptcy actually happened. And here it is something very interesting, you see. When you talk about the bankruptcy, I would like to say that, uh, look at the uh, way a uh, lot of countries didn't help their businesses, uh, even though they had their fund available. And I, I particularly talk about, let's say talk about the US, the most uh, 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 badly affected, uh, among the most badly affected countries where the Federal Reserve had about 130 billion unused fund, the US dollar fund, and somehow it, it could not be channelized into the businesses. So, uh, so when you talk about uh, that, uh, then we know that what actually caused this bankruptcy and these small businesses to close down. Uh, so uh, uh, till date about 140 uh, thousand businesses have been small businesses have been closed down in US alone. And UK, it's another scenario. But the UK, somehow they have sustained it the way they have created some of the fund for the small businesses. About a 50,000 pound you still can avail and, and go through this difficult time. The fourth stage is, is now, is exactly what we are, is happening now because there's no fund. And the our effort to recapitalize business uh, is not really helping us much. Now let's go to looking at how how do, you, how do we really uh, uh, conduct ourselves in such a difficult time? How do you survive? And I think it's an existential crisis. Uh, and that existential crisis is means is that, you know, I probably would talk about the existential philosophy. Uh, is, is if you see, uh, when existential philosophy is what you call it, existence actually precedes your essence. Now, uh, that means that it, put, it reverses the, uh, and that's a common doctrine across all existential uh, philosophers from Kierkegaard to, to John Paul Sartre to, to others, uh, Nietzsche. Uh, but 
what it actually talks about that it reverses the 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 traditional philosophical view that the essence essence here i means the the nature of the business let's say of a thing is actually more fundamental and immaculate than its uh, existence and existence is the way is the fact of being a business is called existence so i i probably see this in that way so that's why i thought to title it this particular slide as the survival mantras the spells the the spell of the existential thinking now now here come the other part of it is that you would it be very surprised to know that most of the businesses today when they are trying to survive they are not focusing on their real life world solutions they are more focusing on a very utopian view view of survival which i called real life utopia now what does it mean is that you i i would give you an example here uh, i i was looking through a lot of these products which came in uh, during this difficult time but are these are the product which are going to really carry you through no not really i mean i looking for a product like you be is it is very ludicrous uh, very hilarious to look at product like londroid now londroid is is i see is a is a is a technology that you know uh, you know you uh, how do you how do you put, fold after you uh, dry clean uh, your laundry and this equipment would be able to help you to fold put them into neat packs you know this this kind of a technology that's another thing i was looking at a jagger and a levis smart collar it's a it's a dog collar it's you put put that on your pet and it it tells you about the behavioral changes in your pet in your pet so if you are looking at this kind of products obviously the, 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 that really could cause difficulty nowadays you see so you look at more like a real life world solutions second is about the disruptive technology which i really do not have to talk much but that's really creating paradigm shift the more and more disruptive technology going to come in and that's probably in, in a way would give you a, a better survival mantra in this difficult time third is the industry look at the industry we are in this era of the industry 4.0 which we are, which we call is the uh, the fourth industrial age now fourth industrial age is particularly talking about uh, what the way the uh, the cybernetics it is about the biological systems interface with the machines uh, it is not the digital world that the third industrial age we are through with that but here all about the cybernetics and that is what it's it's changing the world in the way and you see the iot is probably one of the manifestations of this uh, era of industry 4.0 i think the businesses now uh, small mid sized businesses all businesses need to locate themselves in this fourth industrial age space now uh, the other thing i would like to talk about is that how do we assess our businesses you know that that probably is going to uh, give us the uh, real ammunition to survive in this uh, business ecosystem uh, and that that would touch almost everything you know right from the product development to the crisis management running through you know what kind of uh, entrepreneurial resilience you have when you going through a difficult time you know that that's that's also the one of the survival mantra the third is the the other other thing i want to talk about is the accumulations of the knowledge how organizations are actually uh, becoming more knowledge management oriented uh, merely speaking that is not enough but you really have to make a very definite journey in that directions uh, uh, and that would particularly talking about the way that you assess a business best in, in this in the case of what would be a best case scenario what would be a worst case scenario and how do you see these differences and what is what are the things that are lying in between best case and worst case scenario and the next is and the last one probably this slide would be about identifying what are the real opportunities we have and how these opportunities can be linked to the necessities which are already existing in the society okay so that's that's our survival mantra i i go to the next slide talking about the uneasiness about this uncertainty today and how do you come to terms with this uncertainty uh, uh one of these uh, fundamental thing is that i i'm very uh, impressed with uh, one of this research paper published in the uh, harvard business review and i was looking at this cotney uh, uh, 
Peaklands and the Vigari is a research paper, particularly the way he has assessed uh, the businesses and created that there are four possible ranges within which you have to locate yourselves if you are trying to deal with this uncertainty. And he, he calls them as a clear enough feature, analysis-based predictions on the unknown that are knowable. I'm sorry, and you've got range, one, you've got one yeah. minute left. Yeah, and a range of potential features that can be identified and the true ambiguity. Here only the problem is that the last part where you really have to navigate through the multiple dimensions of the uncertainty, that probably would leave you uh, something in the situations where you're taking a leap in the dark. But otherwise, the way he has ranged himself, the, the, these authors have ranged themselves within these four, uh, is quite an interesting. I'd like you to have a look at that. Then the final, I would conclude that where, how do you find the survival? Our survival is finding a good model. What are those good models? The good models are basically based on three. I call it this model should be profitable, should, models should be repeatable and scalable, these three. And uh, in this, uh, I particularly would like to look at about the three models. One, uh, the George model, uh, and the other one is the Sita Ramans and the D. Vallow. I uh, run through quite a few, and I found these three for, for very interesting particularly from this point of view, that how businesses Sorry. can be profitable, so your, your, and your time so that's, is, how, your time that's is. how I concluded. This is how I conclude, Marimak. So that's my conclusions. Okay. Thank you.